Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here in Northern Virginia. We're covering the Surface Navy Association's 30th Annual Conference and Trade Show. Our coverage here is sponsored by Leonardo DRS, and it's my honor to, uh, to have back on our uh, program uh, Admiral Bob Papp, 24th Commandant of the uh, United States uh, Coast Guard, more importantly, the 22nd Commanding Officer of uh, the United States Coast Guard Cutter uh, Eagle, uh, and uh, who is also the President for Washington Operations of Eastern Shipbuilding. Sir, great seeing you again. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Vago. It's great to be back. I, you know, we ought to get together more frequently than this, but it's always good to see you every year when we come to these conferences. Uh, exactly so. Uh, you, uh, you and I uh, had a, a great conversation. Uh, you know, we've, we've talked a couple of times since, but but certainly in Navy League last year, where you guys were basking in the afterglow of the uh, win in the biggest uh, Coast Guard ongoing acquisition program for 25 offshore patrol cutters, very important uh, a program for the Coast Guard. 25 ships to replace. Uh, 33. Uh, I, I don't want to get to the numbers uh, issue with you, but I wanted you to bring us up to speed on where you guys are on the program. You know, you guys won on not only value, but also the kind of capability you guys were de delivering to, to the Coast Guard. Talk to us a little bit about where you guys are in that program right now. Well, Vago, this is a really exciting time for the offshore patrol cutter uh, project. Uh, last year when I spoke to you, we were just uh, basking, as you said, that we got the award. Uh, but we're also working behind the scenes then because it was not a sure thing that it would be in the budget. Uh, we did get the uh, long lead materials money in the uh, last year's budget and we're really excited now because both chambers uh, for the FY18 budget that's being under consideration up on the hill, uh, both chambers, Senate and House, put $500 million for construction money for the first cutter and uh, once they get that budget passed, uh, we're ready to start cutting steel in September. Steel's on its way, engines are on its way, and we're ready to start building. And uh, talk to us a little about the schedule, about when you expect the first ship to be completed, and what sort of rate you guys are going to be working on as you eat through this program. Well, we're going to deliver it to the Coast Guard in 2021, and uh, that'll be the lead ship. You know, meanwhile, we'll start construction on the second, third, and fourth, and then we start transitioning into two a year. Uh, some people have actually started talking about now, hey, can you ramp that up? Could you build more than two a year? Uh, obviously, there are benefits to the government, benefits to the Coast Guard, uh, efficiencies uh, that we can get the, the, the faster we build them. So uh, there's been talk of block buys, there's been uh, talk of a lot of things going on. Ron O'Rourke, uh, who I'm sure will bring it up and has made reports, has, uh, has talked about it as well. So uh, you know, we're, we're focused on the schedule as it's called for right now, but uh, certainly we'd be willing to ramp that up as well. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, what the international prospects for this are, because every single time a ship of this class comes out, folks start looking overseas. Uh, very capable, very stable platform, which were key requirements, can operate a helicopter, has three boats, which was, I think, a discriminator for you guys in that competition as well. Uh, as you said, you know, the gun is always something, the hood ornament is something that's really interesting, but the real weapon of a Coast Guard cutter are its boats in order to do uh, inspection duties and a whole bunch of other things, interdiction. Talk to us a little bit about what you guys are doing on the international side of this equation given that it, it is a ship that could appeal to a wider array of people than just the Coast Guard? Well, Vago, I think the first and most important thing is we are focused on getting the best possible lead ship possible. I mean, first and foremost, we've got to sell the Coast Guard, we've got to sell the Congress. I mean, everybody's been supporting us real well, uh, but the proof is in that first ship. And we are uh, laser focused on making sure that we uh, put out a, a, a lead quality product in that first cutter, which is going to be named Argus, which was the first revenue cutter built for the United States. Uh, that will start the process of do we sell it to others. You know, I think Eastern Shipbuilding's uh, offshore patrol cutter will be attractive to foreign navies and foreign coast guards be, like it was attractive to the United States Coast Guard, because the United States Coast Guard really in reality cannot afford some of the fancy sh large ships that are put out uh, by our very capable shipbuilders in this country, but uh, the United States builds the, uh, the premium ships. Not every Navy, not every Coast Guard in the world can afford those. Eastern Shipbuilding, because of its focus over the years on commercial activities and making sure value for quality uh, is a driving factor, uh, did that with the Coast Guard, and that's how they won over many first-tier shipbuilding contractors in this country. So uh, I think that uh, that quality and value will be attractive to other foreign countries as well. Um, I know that uh, you're still working to get those 25 uh, fully buckled down. 
But um, you know, you were Coast Guard Commandant at the time. There was a battle uh, over uh, the, the Navy's Coast Guard uh, National Security Cutter Force. Um, you know, you were going to lose a cutter. You got it back. The Coast Guard now is up to nine. There's a little bit of conversation whether or not there are ten. Obviously, those ships, uh, those eight, were supposed to replace the 12 Hamilton-class ships that have done yeoman service uh, over the years. Does the Coast Guard need, or you know, do you see any momentum to try to get 33 of these ships ultimately to replace one in kind, uh, or do you think that it's going to be, you know, something that's going to stay around the 25 number? Well, like I said, we're, we're focused on the program or record of 25 ships, but the reality is, even though these are very capable ships, numbers count, and you can only be in so many places at any one time. Uh, I certainly would have uh, uh, advocated for more ships, but. Uh, when I was coming out, we were in the process of just trying to get them built and trying to get the offshore patrol cutter project going. The reality is, for the National Security Cutter, those ships are replacing 12 high endurance cutters of the Hamilton class, and, uh, and it's very hard to replace 12 ships with nine. Uh, so I applaud Huntington Ingalls, uh, the Congress, and the Coast Guard on their success in getting an additional cutter and who knows, maybe more. The reality is the day-to-day -day work of the Coast Guard is done by the workhorses, the, uh, the medium endurance cutters. Right now, the, the 210 foot and 270 foot cutters. Those are the ones that are out there working their butts off every day with small crews, uh, very economical, very efficient. And uh, we started out a couple years ago with 33 total medium endurance cutters. I think we're down in the range of about 30 right now. But uh, whether it's 33 or 30, 25 ships are going to have a hard time being in all the same places as those 30 or 33 were. So I would advocate, yes, at least 25, but uh, I wouldn't mind seeing 30, 35 uh, offshore patrol cutters being built. And, and since both of those were compromised designs to a degree, their riding qualities were not the best, so they're some of the, the toughest people riding ships out there in the world. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially after the 82, 82s uh, uh, went away. Um, talk to us a little bit uh, about some of the investments you guys have made uh, on technology, on infrastructure down in the yard in order to handle a program uh, as ambitious with a customer that's as tough as the U.S. Coast Guard. Well, I think that uh, that has been the focus of the owner, Brian Desernia. Uh, Brian's a modest guy. Uh, this is a family-owned shipyard. Uh, six of his sons work in the shipyard. And uh, as I said, he lives modestly because what he does is he turns his profits back into the company. Uh, they bought a yard, uh, a, a separate yard in Allenton down there that uh, where they put their uh, steel cutting and fabrication facility and it rivals, it rivals top tier shipbuilders in this country. They have, so we have better steel and, and computerized uh, cutting and uh, fabricating capabilities than a lot of the uh, top tier number one shipyards. So uh, that's the type of thing Brian Discerny is. Uh, he, he invests in his people, he invests in the equipment down there, and uh, a lot of renovations are going on down at the yard now in preparation for uh, the lead ship. So uh, you know, it's all part of the process and why the ship is affordable for the Coast Guard is because it's a uh, frugal, determined company that uh, focuses on quality and value. Admiral, always a pleasure. Thanks very much, really appreciate it, and I uh, hope you have a very successful end today. Thanks, Vago. Thank you.